Welcome in, guys, to FaceTime Fridays here on Hearst Athletics. Jack Angelucci, your host. Uh, something we just started up here, really excited about it, getting a little roundtable discussion with student athletes. Uh, today I'm joined by Mitchell Smith, Mackenzie Galvin, and Joe Carter. Uh, and guys, uh, take away, introduce yourselves first of all. Uh, I'm Mitchell Smith. Uh, I'm from Buffalo. I'm a finance major doing the four plus one in data science. And uh, I'm from Buffalo, New York, and I play golf here at Mercier's. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Galvin. I'm from Springfield, New York. I play class. I'm a sophomore, and I'm an early childhood and special education major. Hi, I'm Joe Carter. I'm a sophomore at Mercier's. So I'm a football player I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm a bio pre-med major. So, uh, guys, just to start off here, obviously, this whole situation with COVID-19, something that, you know, no one really saw coming. Um, and especially in the world of athletics, something that everyone's kind of ha- kind of have to adjust to. Um, so just starting off, how have you guys kind of adjusted to being at home, you know, not being able to be with your teams as much um, and adjusting to like academics uh, in, the, in the remote setting? Uh, Mackenzie, you can go ahead and start if you want. Um, so my team, we've been doing a lot of TikToks together, um, just to trying to like keep us all laughing and stuff. Um, but on a more serious note, we've also been sending like, each other like workouts to try and like compete against each other, which I think is really fun. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's good to kind of keep in touch and do that and also keep pushing each other even uh, when you're not exactly physically together. Uh, Mitch, anything to add to that? Uh, I mean, just as far as academics go, it's kind of been, I don't know, it's kind of been all right. Just taking the online classes, doing as much work as you can. Uh, for me, it's kind of been nice. Uh, being home as far as work-wise, you don't have as many distractions. Um, you don't have all your buddies to hang out with because of the whole quarantine thing. So as far as that, on the academic side, I think um, it's been an adjustment, but I think everybody's adjusting pretty well. Definitely. You know anything to add? Yeah, you know, we're just football's in a different boat just because we, you know, it wasn't our actual in-season, unlike like lacrosse, but we were, you know, we are – we had spring ball and it was going to be a big spring for us as a team just because we had a lot of, a lot of guys graduate, a lot of unknowns that we kind of, you know, we're getting, we were all excited to kind of get out there and earn separate spots for earn our roles. So, you know, that's the only thing, you know, that kind of sucks for us. So we've, you know, we've had a couple just online meetings, the whole team FaceTime, which as you guys can imagine, is probably wild with 80 kids and coaches. Yeah, I know. I was thinking that's, about that. When I saw it. I saw it on social media the other day. I was thinking that must be a little bit hectic with all those yeah, guys. Was, it was a little crazy, but, you know, we started doing stuff like that and just, you know, staying in shape, running, push-ups, anything we can do to just stay in shape and get ready for the fall. What's your guys' favorite part of being home right now? Mitch, anything there? Uh, honestly, I don't know. My mom's a pretty good cook, so, like, I mean, like that. That's kinda... what I was thinking you were going to get some answers <laughs> about food. Yeah, Joe's nodding his head, too. Same thing, Joe? Yeah, the food. It's just that, you know, it's nice to get home cooking every day. Kenzie, anything you're miss or happy to be home with or so excited to not eat dining hall food <laughs> <laughs> all right so the food obviously is the big draw i guess to coming back home all right um but yeah i mean joe you touched on it a little bit uh, about how you guys are in a different boat than uh, mitch and mckenzie are uh with them being in season you guys out of season so i'll start off with uh, mitch and mckenzie what was your initial reaction really uh finding out about um the season being canceled and i know mackenzie you guys had a pretty solid start to your season going three and one on the year nationally ranked uh just talk about how quickly you know that that evaporates and what the whole team's reaction was uh to that well so i will i we didn't we knew going into our last practice that we were probably going to end sh- soon or at least like postpone for a little while and we started practice like off normal. We started warming up and then we went on and our assistant was like, all right, guys, we're going to play kickball. And like, if you guys know our coach, we are always like working hard in practice. Like we never have like a day off a break or anything like that. And we knew that that was kind of like the time that we were like, oh, this is kind of like real. Something's definitely going to happen. Things are definitely going to be changing. Um, and then, like, after that, we all went to the locker room, and it was just silent for, like, an hour. We all just sat there, practice under early. We just sat there, like, we just we all wanted to be together. Um, not a lot was said. It was just, like, a general general just thing that we wanted to be all together, and just knowing that we were all in the same room together was better than um, anything else at that point. Right. Mitch? 
Uh, it was uh, for the golf team. It was kind of crazy because coming off spring break, um, then we had our trip to North Carolina at Pinehurst. So we left for that and we got our two practice rounds in. And then at the end of our second practice round, we got word that the tournament was canceled. And then within 48 hours of our tournament getting canceled, our season got canceled and then school basically got canceled. So it was kind of, it was a lot in a short time frame, but um, I, don't know, I think it stinks because our season was just starting just like McKenzie and um, I don't know, it was kind of, we knew we had a good team going into going into this spring season. We knew we had a good shot at nationals. Um, we were losing one senior next year, a good player. And so we figured we want to try to get the nationals for him for a coach, but um, obviously didn't turn out that way. But um, I think everybody's been taking it all right. It was kind of hard at first, but everybody's adjusting and getting ready to get some golf in in the summer. Yeah, I know. I think one of the things that I saw in both of you guys talking about the whole reaction is just how quick it happens, you know? Uh, it feel, I mean, it was only, what, about two, a little over two weeks ago. It feels like it was two months ago, honestly, just how, how quick. Uh, but this whole, I mean, at the same time, too, like time just passing slowly with everything developing and everything. Uh, but, yeah, in that sense, you know, things kind of move pretty quickly. And then, Joe, one thing to turn to you, you mentioned spring ball. Uh, I know you guys coming off a six and five season, you mentioned losing a lot of guys. Um, you as a quarterback, especially, I imagine spring ball's a time where you're getting used to, you know, those new weapons around you, how your offense is going to look. So talk about how that's going to kind of change your approach and the whole offense's approach going in to the fall with oh, you not being able to adjust, you know, uh, like you normally would. So, you know, speaking as, like you said, as a quarterback from my position specifically, you know, obviously Doug's a four-year start and he's, he graduated. Now, you know, Mike Lowry is a freshman. He has a couple games under his belt. I played in a few games, and we have four guys. And, you know, it's not necessarily like we did. We had a lot of guys graduate, but the pieces are there. It was just, like, from a mental aspect, like, there's not a lot of game experience in our room specifically. And just, you know, with some of the other guys that have lost. So the spring was going to be huge, to even mentally more than physically, just running the plays, getting it all done. So I guess the way to fix that is, you know, as a quarterback group, we're going to meet once a week and just – on FaceTime like this and just kind of go through the playbook, go mentally. So at least at the very least coming in the fall, all four of us that are in the room and then the two freshmen coming in know the scheme. Everyone's on the same playing field. And it's just whoever's going to help the team win is going to go out there and play. Yeah, uh, definitely interesting. Uh, not a normal situation um, to put yourself in. Like you said, with you guys kind of having to fill that void with Doug, uh, it'll definitely be interesting to see how you guys adjust, but it seems like you have a pretty good plan in place, at least right there. Um, so then the NCAA just announced they're going to give eligibility back to the spring athletes. Uh, what was your guys' reaction to that? I mean, the NCAA acted on this pretty quickly um, and in a, in a timely manner. So what was your guys' initial reaction when, when that came about? Um, Joe, if you want to start off? Yeah, so, you know, obviously it's going to sound cliche, but I just, it, I, you know, it sucks for seniors. I felt awful for them. I know the NCAA is going to give them – that eligibility back, but I know Mitch and Kenzie can speak on it more, obviously there, you know, there's girls and guys that have jobs set up, have grad school set up where they can't go use that eligibility anyway, either the, either way. And then they just, you know, they never got to finish, never got to play in their last season. Yeah. Right. And you too, you don't want to add. Okay. Um, I just think that like, they're trying to give us time back, but it's time that's already lost. Joe kind of already said it, but like, it's, People already have plans, like their, their lives have to move on. I don't know where I'm going to be in like two years. And like, I don't know if I'm going to even like use it or whatever, but I don't know. I just think that it's something that they're trying to replace that's irreplaceable. I would agree with, with both those statements, but I mean, I'm kind of in a different boat doing the four plus one program. I do have a fifth year, so it, it will be kind of nice to be able to play all five years, essentially, even though I lost out on this spring season, but um, just being able to compete and play my, fifth year and get that full year back is kind of nice from my viewpoint yeah and then the NCAA, NCAA announcing that they'll do the same for all divisions division one division two division three so something to definitely keep an eye on in the future um and see how people decide to use that eligibility the amount of people that use it like you said Mackenzie, you don't know where you're going to be still up in the air to see how that kind of plays out over the next couple of years um just to kind of close things out figure it out Figure we do some rapid fire. Question number one, Joe. I know I'm putting you in a tough spot. You got the, you got you're right off the bat. I have to go first here, but uh, I think I think you'll, you'll be able to handle the pressure. So, um, question number one, uh, what made you choose Mercyhurst? 
felt felt like I was at home, you know, loved my visit, loved the team. It just, it was a place for me. Yeah, it sounds cliche, but like, as soon as I walked through the gates or drove through the gates, like, I knew. Yeah, kind of saying it was, it was a nice campus. Um, obviously, they had the academics I was looking for, and uh, yeah, it just, just felt good walking in. Ryan or Egan? Ryan. Depends on the meal. Breakfast is always Egan, but dinner, definitely Ryan. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah I agree with that. Breakfast, always Egan. All right. Favorite place to eat off campus? Most. Picasso's. Uh, Chick-fil-A. Um, so, favorite thing to do outside of your sports at Mercyhurst? At Mercyhurst? Yes. Go, go to the other games and see the other athletes compete. Hang out outside. Nice out, you know, sunshine. Uh, honestly, just I don't know, just hang out with my teammates, hang out with my buddies, and uh, I was kind of biased here, but also working for the athletic department was was a lot of fun this past year. All right, Mitch, trying to, I, I see what you're trying to do. I know, get a little. Work. It was it was fun. Dude. Last one. If you could trade lives with any person for one day, who would it be and why? Oh, Tom Brady, best quarterback ever. All right. Okay. That's easy. Blake Lively because she's married to Ryan Reynolds. All right. Oh, um, oh, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. Okay. Yeah. Dude, there you go. So we got more money than he knows what to do with. Yeah. Brady and Tiger Woods. All right. All right. So guys, want to thank you for joining me for this first Facetime Friday. Uh, good group to you know kind of get this whole uh, these episodes kicked off with. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to sit down and uh, talk talk to me about this and um we we thank you all for joining us for this first facetime fridays on hearst athletics we'll be back next friday with our second episode please make sure to tune in uh laker nation and uh go lakers